Matthew 18, 18. Don't preach to you about where two or three are gathered. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you, two of you, just two of you, shall agree on earth as touching anything, that's not anything, that's anything, that's two words. That word any is an adjective and how many things. Amen. That they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Let's get the job done when nothing else seems possible. I'm glad, Lord God, today that thou art our God. Yes, Lord. Beside thee there is no other. Thou the Alpha and Omega, the Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, first and last. In the beginning was the God. And thou art the Creator. We bow our heads humbly before thee, acknowledge nobody else or no other thing except yes, God. Thy son, Jesus. Lord, I pray tonight might be a time when you get glory and honor. And may we tonight realize that it's just two. Just two. Oh, God. Just two. Help us, God, tonight to find many. Yes. But please, let us find two. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I saw a sign down town when I was going down Hawkins said, the power of you. That means the University of Louisville. I want to talk about the power of two. Maybe the power of three. But without Jesus, there's no power at all. That's right. Yeah. Right. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. The world has only seen what God can do with one man who's totally committed only one time. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Camp in Murray, Mississippi, built a church there, they built a preacher's conference there out of this world, sent, sent preachers to every state of the United States at the same time on Thanksgiving Day and prayed in every, every uh, capital ground with a flag up at, at the same hour all over the United States. He got things done. He had 125,000 converts, and none of them were standards, they all was kneelers. He didn't have no, no stand up converts, it's all but kneelers. He was a great man of God. And uh, he was never married. He prayed till he prayed through the carpet into the concrete with his knees in the same spot and cheer plumb more out where he put his elbows. God used that man. as the greatest man I've ever met. Some people say Billy Graham was. Maybe he, maybe so. I don't know. But first raise was one I knew better than any. Now, he was a great man of God. And what God can do with one man can never has never yet been seen until Jesus Christ. Been some totally dedicated people. Been some men gave their whole lives to Christ. But Jesus Christ is the only one who lived it perfectly truly, and right with no mistakes. Amen. Three are these whom God honors. God honors two or three who agree upon touching something. Right. Where two agree, he honors. But when three agrees, he honors. Where two or three are gathered together in the midst, I'll be with them. And what if they ask that they, they can receive. True. God wants us to agree today as two or three. First of all, they were burdened, two or three. It takes people with a burden to get souls saved. Yes. Amen. We can do our thing, watch our television, we can go to fishing, we can go hunting, we can go play ball, whatever we're going to do, but unless somebody gets burdened for sinners, they're going to die and go to hell without the gospel. Amen. Amen. We've got to have burdened people. Two people that are burdened. Two people that agree upon something. That's got to be done, that must be done, unless souls perish. Those two seize a need, feel a need, agree to feel that need, do the job, and pray and seek God, and they get it confident. God Woo! said, he give what they ask. He said he'd give it to them. Two, just two. Get your wife. Get, get together, agree, write down something, and pray every morning, every noon, every night about that one thing until you see it happen. You see a bunch of women in the they fell apart, of course, because a women's group, without God as a center of it, they said, Push! Pray until something happens. Friend, that's a good good suggestion. But what happened to it? It fell through. We've got to pray until something happens, and that don't mean quit. Amen. Amen. Once, when something happens, that doesn't mean what needs to happen is for the, your group to break up, for you and your friend to pray. We've got to keep it going. Right. 
push, pray till something happens. These two are burden people. You got to have a burden. Do we care if the world goes to hell or not? You got to have a burden for the world. This is a missionary Baptist church. We believe that every person on planet Earth yes. must be saved by the blood of Jesus, the gospel of Christ, or they're going to spend eternity in the devil's hell. We believe that. And if you don't believe that, you're not in the church that we have set up here. The Bible teaches that. They've got to have Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes far but by me. There's one name given unto heaven among me whereby I must be saved, the name of Jesus Christ. One man between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, you're still lost. Right. The black man in Africa, the yellow man in Asia, the red man in the mountains, you and I, everybody must have Christ or lost. Amen. If you don't. Or you're lost if you don't. Burden. We've got to have a burden. We've got to have a care. We've got to care. If we don't care, who's going to? If you and I, as God's born again children, don't care who is going to care, who's going to send the missionaries, who's going to back them, who's going to care about the thing. We've got to care. We've got to get burdened about it. And number two, they were a coveted people. They agreed with each other. They went into a covenant together. They went into a testament together. They bound themselves together. They made an agreement over the book of Acts. There was about 40 of them one day made, a, made an agreement that they wouldn't even eat until they killed Paul. They either starved to death or they broke their vow. Friend, when you make a vow, it's better not to make a vow than it is to make a vow and break it. Right. If you're not going to do what you agree to do, don't agree because it sows discord and trouble in, in everything going on. Yes. If you set out to get something done and you fall through and people mock you, Jesus said, he said huh. they said, look at that. Said, this man began a good work and was not able to finish it. This man began a good work and was not able to finish it. And they'll mock him, make fun of him. Yeah. When you make a covenant, see it through. Yeah. Stay with it. When two are covenant together, when they agree together and they make their vow and they say, we agree to do this, not to everybody else but to each other, then God will honor it. But if you don't fulfill your vow, you break down the faith of others. God fulfills They've covenanted. The word covenant means agree to. If you and your wife will agree on your children and pray until God Almighty gets them. Amen. Don't never quit. Pray without ceasing. Seek God until you get them. And God will honor a covenant. He'll honor your burden if you keep on a prayer. Number three there. I kind of close. Those two or three are separated. They come out from among the world and separate together and do something for Jesus. Now if we're going to live like the devil... Cuss like the devil, smoke and drink like the devil, and run around the devil's crowd, and then wonder why God don't hear our prayers. That's why I don't hear your prayers. That's right. You answer your own question. David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord not hear my prayers. And God said, your sins have come up before me and separated me from you. When you pray, I won't look at them. I lift up your hands and won't look at them. When you pray, I will not hear. Sins, if you're going to live like the devil, then pray God and wonder why God don't answer your patting your feet in ice water. You ain't getting no work. We've got to start believing and praying and coming out from the world so that our lives will be separated from God. Separation. God said, my people are peculiar people, zealous unto good people, separated from the world. We've got to separate. We've got to come out from among them. God will not hear your prayers when you're walking with the devil's crowd. Right. You cannot soar with eagles and hang out the hoot out. You've got to separate from God. The world is separate to God. So it's a burden crowd. It's a covenant together. Before I leave this separate thing, give you an illustration. When I first got saved in North Carolina, I heard over in Lenore that the Calvary Baptist Church was going to take a bus load to Camp Zion. I'd never been to Camp Zion. Heard about it. Wanted to go. So I went over there. Took a week off work. Went over there. Got on the bus and took off. And the pastor there was a wonderful man. Great man. I love him. And he took us bus, bus load of us young people down there to North Carolina, to uh, Camp Zion, Merle, Mississippi, from Lenore, North Carolina. Got out of the bus, and as soon as your feet touched the ground, you knew it was on holy ground. You had to walk close. You had to walk easy. You just, you just knew that God was there for watching everything you did or say. Well, they had a meeting. And a preacher got up her name, Jimmy Chapman. And he preached on separation. I mean, he put the nose to the grinder. Praise the Lord. Rubbed your face in it. I mean, he was mean and ugly and, and rough <laughs> and tough. Yeah. And that preacher that had used the bus to haul us down there, Went running down the aisle screaming and squalling and screaming. I thought he was a great man of God. And he was. He hit that altar and a whole bunch more people come in and got praying. He got up and got the microphone and started testifying. He said, my wife and I went on vacation this summer. He said, we went down to Merle, 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 
Myrtle, Myrtle Beach. Beach, Myrtle Beach. And that's Myrtle, Mississippi, down there where the county, Myrtle Beach. So we was laying out on a blanket. I had my bathing suit on, my wife had hers on, the kids were playing in the water. I said, I was laying there, I said, women's come walking by. I said, walk by. And he said, honey, I said, get up. So we're getting out of here. And they left. He stood there and said, I was just as saved laying on that blanket in a bathing suit as I am right now. He said, but I was carnal. Yeah. Man, it broke out. People started jumping benches and shouting and running. Yeah. Yeah. You can be saved and not live close and be carnal-minded and get nothing done. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That same preacher came back to Lenore, North Carolina and asked Andy Mead from St. John Baptist Church God bless you, church. Amen. You see, this was a separated two. These two separated, consecrated, dedicated, and got the job done. Amen. Back to this third, next point. The dedicated. <laughs> These dedicated crowds, they don't shut up. They don't let up. And they just keep on going. They never give up. Dedication has no place to get out. It has no place to quit. Dedication has no place to well, I've had enough, I'm going to quit. Now, no, sir. Dedication is something that involves your whole life till you die. Dedication. That's why husbands ain't dedicated to the wives. That's what split up. When you say, until death do me part, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. Amen. It don't always happen. And it sows trouble, discord, and havoc. It causes hindrances in the church and in life. But the problem is we need to be dedicated to death, do us part, bless God, mean what you say, say what you mean, and follow the thing through. Amen. These two or three, they're burdened, covenanted, separated, dedicated, and they're praying people. Or two or three together in my name. Or two or three pray. Two or three pray, agree upon touching something. If two people want somebody to say bad enough, and they'll pray bad enough and hard enough and long enough, God will hear them and he'll do it. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. The people who really want somebody saved, they'll fast the flesh and feed the spirit. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to feed the flesh all day long, you expect God to hear you. You've got to separate from the world. Come aside. Come out from among them and be holy and zealous and seek God's face and he'll do something for you. Dedication, prayer life. Or two or three, get, get in mind and pray. You've got to pray. Prayer. Pray without ceasing. You've got you to fast the flesh. You, you can't feed the flesh. You can't pacify the flesh. If you're always trying to satisfy your carnal nature and satisfy your flesh, you ain't never going to get spiritual. Plain and simple. You reap what you sow. You sow to the flesh, of the flesh you reap corruption. If you sow to the Spirit, you reap of the Spirit, life everlasting. You reap what you sow. If you want somebody to save, you can't spend your time fishing and hunting and playing ball. you got to spend time in prayer and fasting and seeking God. But God promised if two or more will seek my face and pray, he'll give them what they ask for. Well, the thing about it is we need to pray first of all for conviction. Oh, we pray, oh, God save so-and-so, God save so-and-so, God save so-and-so. They're not going to get saved if they're in conviction. Now, count time one night, there's a, one time during the dinner time, Holy Ghost broke out in the cafeteria, nobody ate. They spent too much time running around shouting. And... <laughs> 2,000 young people, all of them crazy as a bat. They're running. <laughs> and plus our counselors. And there was one boy back from our table up against the ball. And I looked up our scene and me and Roger Rogers started on our hands and knees the Bible started crawling back there and preaching to him. And first he come by and he said, what's going on? What's going on? I said, we're trying to get him saved. He looked around and said, pray for him getting our conviction. He ain't our conviction. So we could start praying for getting our conviction. He got saved for the meetings out. Amen. It, they got to be ashamed of themselves for the one to say. They got to be convicted. A man can brag about how big a sinner he is, and he's fine and dandy. But when he gets feeling guilty about being that big sinner, then he ain't got any fine and dandy anymore. Yes. They've got to come conviction. They've got to be ashamed of themselves. Yes. When a man brags about how much sinning he's done, he's a big bad dude, come on. That's, that's good. But if he gets saved, 
Then he, that begins to be the little part. He don't brag about that no more. Right. I did a lot of junk. But I don't run around telling everybody about it because I don't want them to know it. Don't want them to know it. God said he'd never remember it again. And I ain't going to tell you, so you'll never know it. I was bad enough, that's all you need to know. But the fact is, people brag about their sinning. Oh, I drink more liquor than anybody else. That ain't one of the time I brags that. Uh -huh. My daddy said one time, so I, I drunk enough liquor, Ricka. He couldn't talk, he's Ricka. I drunk enough Ricka to float a battleship. What kind of bragging is that? Guy up on Mitchell, people named Mitchell, he took a pint bottle, stuck it on, until it's empty. A pint of moonshine liquor, and started shaking. He shook till he died. Years later, when he drunk coffee, he had two handles. We had to pull it like that to drink coffee because we drunk one handle. He thought he was big and bad because he drank a whole pint without taking it down. Don't brag on what a bad sinner you are or what a bad sinner you've been. Brag on Jesus. Yeah. What he delivered you from. We need to pray for conviction. People aren't convicted about sin anymore. They actually brag about it. Christians brag about it, about how much they can do or what they can do. Friend, we need to separate. We need to dress like a Christian. We need to talk like a Christian. Oh, amen. We need to walk like a Christian. And by the way, I'm on that subject. We're talking about the LSGBD and all that junk. Q, it ends with a Q. Whatever. The fact is, it's against the Bible amen. for a man to wear a woman's clothes. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's against the Bible for a woman to wear a man's clothes. Don't amen too quick now, some of you ladies. But the fact is, God says it's abomination. Not reprobation, but abomination. One step more is reprobation. Yeah. And that's in the book of Romans. It says there, God gave much vile faces, God made an order of faces, and God turned them over to reprobate mine. Yeah. If we had stopped the cross dressing, a hundred years ago, yeah. wouldn't have the BTQW yeah. today. Right. But the fact is, we didn't stop it. We let it go. And now it's outrageous. And people come to the church. A girl stood right here. Right And she sung one of the prettiest songs there was with black tights on. I couldn't amen it the way to fix it. And one woman stood right here and she had on a sequin dress, red. Looked like fish scale. Armpits are showing, no neck showing, little straps on children. She raised her hands, praying God, and pulled her neck dress up to here when she did it. I couldn't name that junk. I ain't vibed back neither. God just ain't in the filth and corruption of the flesh. They had separation. And it's number two is what God promises to his two or three. What kind of people are those two or three? I just preached it to you. Now what does God promise to do for them two or three? <laughs> Not everybody, just them two or three. You may go to church every time the doors open and never get a prayer answered. You may worship, feel good, go home, so I went to church. And you'll feel, feel okay about going to heaven. That's wonderful. But if you're going to get somebody saved, it's going to take some separation, some dedication, some consecration, some prayer, and some clean living. God will hear your prayer. If two or more agree, you got to agree. Amen. First of all, with God, then with each other. Right. What God promised to do for these two or three? He said, I'll meet with them. How many times did you ever come to church and you say, Well, I didn't feel nothing today? I didn't get much out of it today. Old Brother Moe's kind of stuttered tonight. I didn't get much out of that. I, I don't know if we'll go back or not. Friend, if you'll come in here, you can at least find one more to agree with you and to pray and to preach and sing and worship God. Amen. We're two together. Everybody not, might, might not get in the meeting, but that don't keep you from getting in it. Amen. Everybody might not be agree with you tonight, but you can agree with God. Amen. Or two or more agree, God said, I will honor them. I will meet with them. When I came in the door tonight, I knew God was going to meet us. I just knew it. I figured I'd find at least one more fellow here wanting to shout. But the fact is, God promised he'd meet with two or more who agreed. And we got 25 here, 30 maybe, that agree. We agree. We agree. Amen. We agree on the church doctrine. We agree on the word of God. 
We agree on the manner of worship. We agree on the will of God. We want to do right and God will help us do right if we agree to do that. What God promises for his two or three, he says, I'll meet with them. Let me read that to you. Let's see here now. Uh, for where two or three are together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Have you felt God here yet tonight? Yes. That's a good sign you're agreeing with the book. Good sign you're agreeing with the preaching. Good sign you're agreeing with the Holy Ghost. Well, he said, I'll meet with them. And I ain't going to never come to church unless I can find at least one person else that'll, that'll agree with this book. God, find, God, agree. God, have a good time in the house of God. You can't do it if you don't agree. The Bible said, how can two walk together except to be agreed? That's what the book says. Watch it. He promised to meet with them. He promised to honor them and recognize their agreement. When two agree upon something, God sees it. And he begins to honor that, that prayer, honor that agreement, honor that conviction, honor that faith. And what they've asked for, God said, I will give it to them. Amen. Two people, husband and wife, brother and sister, two brothers, just two people. Me and Dennis, me and Mark, me and Daryl, me and anybody, just two people. If we get together and get in the name of Jesus and begin to pray in his name, he said he'll meet in the middle of us and give us what we ask for. Amen. God's promise. I'll get to that in just a minute. He proposes to grant their petition. No exceptions. No failures. God will keep his word. Did he say, I will give it to them? Let me read it to you again. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done. Amen. God Almighty. <laughs> Amen. Ain't that what it said? Read that again. Ain't that what it said, Brother Mark? Ain't that what it said? That's what it said. It shall be yeah. done. Yep. Who said that? Red letter. Jesus said it. Right. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. That ain't me making nothing up. That's not new, new doctrine. That's the blessed book. Yep. Let me read it again. Anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. Amen. Two, just two. Everybody in hell will have to agree with me, just one of you. <laughs> Amen. Shout and have it. Now watch it here. No exceptions. No exceptions. If you meet these requirements up here and agree like God said, He said, I'll do it. I'll do it. He said, it shall be done. Pours our faith tonight. Well, no exceptions, no failures. God honors his word and God honors the covenant that you make. Two people agree and God honor, honor that. Well, number, the point, last point is this. Who are God's two or three here tonight? Who are God's two or three? Get together with somebody, your husband or somebody, and... and Talk on the phone or talk by the bedside or talk by the kitchen table and, and say, this is what we want. And we're going to pray for it. We're going to agree. We're going to get it. We're going to keep after it until we get it. And God will look down and see your determination and see your faith and he'll give you what you ask. Amen. Who are God's two or three here now? There's some persons in this community, in your family, in your community, in your life, that will die and go to a devil's hell unless God can find two that will agree on their salvation. Unless you find somebody to agree with and go after them, they're going to be lost for eternity. Come on. Somebody has to be under the burden, like old brother Rod Jones preaches. Pray for Bob. Pray for a burden, opportunity, and boldness. Be your faith. If you'll seek God, he'll give you the boldness, the burden, and the opportunity. Have you ever heard, of, well, I'd do such and such, if such and such. No, God puts it right in front of you. You have to do something. God's on the throne, friend. If he can find two or three, souls will stay out of hell if he can find two or three. God wants to show the church and this community that he is the living God. And he does it by honoring that two or three. When two or three agree, and they get what God promised them, 
They can come to church with hands in the air, shouting the victory. Somebody said, what's wrong with them? They got what they asked for. Hallelujah. And then they begin to tell you what God gave them and what they asked for and how he worked. And somebody got saved. And that makes everybody else want to go out and agree and touch and do something for God. Who are the two or three here tonight that can get something done? God will honor two or three. He'll honor two or three more than will the whole church unless the whole church agrees. Agreeing is what gets it done. Agreeing is what gets it done. The word confession means to agree with. God said, Thou shalt not kill. I confess. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I confess. What you're doing is you're agreeing with God. Confession is agreeing with God. And coming to you agree with God, and God will make, make it happen if you believe that God wants you to do something such, such and you commit to doing it. God will get it done. Uh, it says right here if they agree upon touching anything, not anything, but anything. Thing. Any meaning every. Just any of them. Any thing. Two words are not just one word, but two words are anything. God wants to show this church and this community how great a living God He is and how powerful He is. And He honors those two or three. Last of all, under point number three. Some people go to hell if somebody will get under the burden. And God will use those two to show His power. Number three. Who will come together as God's two or three and covenant together to pray for definite persons and definite projects? Missionary board back there, I'm getting where I look at it more all the time. It's like every time I walk by, I stop, pick out somebody and pray for them, look at it, pray for them. Amen. Sometimes I'm here by myself and I walk and just look at everyone in the pictures. And some of some I don't even remember the faces, but they're still missionaries. They're still getting the job done. And I can't keep, keep up with all that stuff, but I pray for every one of them. Yeah. That God will use them. And we as a church are covenanted with those people. We agree with those people. We support those people. We pray for those people. And we live so that God will hear our prayers. And if we're not going to live so that God will hear us, don't quit praying. But you'll get a better answer if you start living right. Mm -hmm. God will answer. Yes. These two or three. Just two. Or three. But God promised to be in the middle of them. Sometimes you come to church and so and so's a shouting, so and so's a shouting, so and so sitting there looking like what's going on? Let's God get in the meeting for you. Amen. Get in the Holy Ghost. Get in the Spirit. Get in the Word. Get on your knees. Get in the altar and pray until something happens in your soul, and then God will give you the bob business, yep. burden and opportunity and boldness. He'll give you an opportunity to go do something for Jesus. If you want the burden, He'll give you one. If you want to be a covenant person, you'll give. If you want to join up with somebody and say, "Let's me, you pray about this thing," and we'll check in about once a week and see how it's going. Might happen before you get the first check in. God wants to do it. He promises He would do it if we would agree. Let's pray. Father, come to you in Jesus' name. Thank for prayer partners. I thank you, Lord God, for prayer partners. People who's going to pray and can't be stopped. People who's going to pray. And won't shut up. People are going to keep on working when nobody else is working. People are going to keep on pushing when everybody else is sitting down. God, I pray it helps. Find some prayer partners, join hands, join hearts, join faith, and pray for a definite thing until that thing comes to pass. You promised. You're not slack concerning your promises. You said you would give it to them. <laughs> Lord, help us to take that your word and then live our life in accordance with the covenant with thee. God bless this church tonight. May folks come to the altar. May they come <coughs> with their holding hands with each other, covenanted to get something done. God bless every prayer prayed, every covenant made, every two or three agree upon touching something. Lord, may they get it. May they come rejoicing and telling about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.